Hey there, everybody. Pete Pardo here from Sea of Tranquility. Welcome to another episode of What's Hot with Sea of Tranquility. That's right. It's Wednesday. New album or new product review day, I should say, because sometimes we review uh, books or Blu-rays or DVDs, that sort of thing, concert, uh, concert films and things like that. But uh, today it's all about brand new CDs that are coming out. Uh, in this case, this is one that came out a few months ago in late 2021. Again, we're, we're still kind of playing catch up on some late 21, 2021 releases here and there. So this is the, the third album, third studio album from U.S. band. Uh, they're mostly known as a Rush tribute band. The band is called Why Why Not? or Y-Y-N-O-T, Light and Shade, their third full-length studio album. So like I mentioned, they uh, have made a name for themselves as a Rush tribute band with female vocals, but they also have three albums out of all original material. This is their third, so we've, we've talked here on the channel about Resonance from 2019, as well as their self-titled from 2018. Okay, and what's really cool, all the packaging is very, very similar on these. So they all have a very similar look and feel, all digipacks with nice thick booklets with photos and pictures and lyrics and things like that. But today we're looking at uh, their third album, and let me show you the show you the set here. Okay, so light and shade, <coughs> booklet. Like I said, there is the band, although they have had a personnel change <clears throat> fairly recently. Excuse my nasal drip going on here. So we've got uh, Billy Alexander on guitars, keyboards, and vocals. You've got Rocky Cooner on vocals. She is no longer in the band. They have a new singer. Her name, his name is Patty. Uh, you got Tim Storacci on bass and Mike Herzl on drums with uh, guest drums on one track from Tony Mora, <clears throat> all songs written, produced, arranged, and mixed by Billy Alexander. And, uh, yeah. So, brand new album. Interestingly enough, I have very similar opinions on this album that I do with their first two albums. <clears throat> all three are really good, pleasing to listen to. Uh, you can tell, obviously... Even if you did not know that they were a Rush tribute band and play lots of shows where they do Rush covers and things like that, uh, you can tell there is a love of the band Rush going throughout their music. The guitars, the bass, the drums, musically speaking, there's a lot of Rush textures going on here. And specifically, I get like a maybe like late 80s, early 90s Rush feel. They're more so like Counterparts era, maybe Presto, Counterparts. Uh, you know, that sort of era of Rush, which is uh, perfectly fine with me. I love that era of Rush, uh, Rush in the 90s. Uh, very underrated, I think. Most people, when they think of classic Rush, they always want to go back to the 70s and the early 80s. Then you've got the mid-late 80s with the very synth-heavy era, and then, you know, the 90s moving back more towards more guitar-based music. And that's kind of where these guys sit. Interestingly enough, with female vocals, right? Because uh, you have Getty, very high-pitched vocals, and they go a different route here with uh, Why Why Not. And with this album... Like I said, the last album with Rocky on vocals. She's a really good singer. <clears throat> a really good singer. My issue with her is more of her in this band. And I kind of spoke about that when I reviewed the first two Why Why Not albums. And I'm going to speak about it again here. Uh, as I go through this album, I keep thinking, wow, what a really good singer she is. But she should be singing like straight ahead pop songs. And I find that her vocals, while really good just sound a little too kind of squeaky clean for this type of music. And I, I, I kind of, I, I want a little more edge, right? And I don't quite get that from her. She's great. She's great. I just don't know if she's a great fit for this band. And obviously maybe the band felt the same, right? Because they've made a change recently. But let's go through the album here. So there are eight songs in total. You've got kicking off the album is the, uh, what do you got to hear about uh, nine, uh, nine section tie opening to track called wire and wood the ballad of joey electric <clears throat> which uh <clears throat> all instrumental 
very progressive, very Rush reminiscent, really nice, lovely, kind of like acoustic guitar textures, and then really intricate, kind of proggy, hard rock, you know, good, great electric guitar. Uh, and it's, uh, like I said, it's got all sorts of sections here. Allegro, Situation Blues, Streets, Friends, Love, Make It Happen, Bosses and Brothers, Time to Breathe and Run. Terrific track. And I'm like, you know, so right off that just gets you into the mood for the album. And then the second track comes in, Living Proof, which is the, the rest of the songs are all vocal-oriented songs. Living Proof is great. Uh, it's up-tempo, it's catchy, it's a good hard rock song with some pop hooks. And I think Rocky sounds really good on this track because she's got a little bit more oomph to her vocals. And uh, just a terrific catchy track. And along with the Wire and Wood opening instrumental ep mini epic, uh, I think Living Proof might be my favorite song on the album. Really, really good. Then you got Fall From Sky, which is more of like an acoustic pop number. It's okay. Her vocals are spectacular on it. I'm just kind of like, all right, to me it almost sounds like there's a couple tracks on this album that seems like they're, they're doing material that's more suitable for her voice. And I don't know if that's necessarily the style the band wants to go into. I don't know. Fall From the Sky, again, it's a nice song. I want a little bit more, right? I'm looking, for me, I'm looking for more of the real upbeat, catchy, hard rock songs because I, I know these guys are capable of that and they can do that. You know, there's plenty of them on the first two albums. Uh, Mask is really good. Mask is up next. That's a good up-tempo rocker, also pretty catchy. Then you got Firefly. Again, kind of mellow, kind of more acoustic textures and things like that. It's okay. Uh, Weight of the World, I like that. Nice guitar riffs and guitar textures. Love the upfront bass. Uh, he's an amazing bass player, as you can tell. I mean, these guys can play their instruments, no doubt. This is top-notch production work, top-notch arrangement. Really like it a lot. Uh, Burning Bridge, also a pretty good song. Again, kind of rocks in spots, right? And then you got uh, Star, Sun, and Moon, which finishes it off. Again, going back to kind of a little, little more atmospheric, moody textures, some acoustic stuff like that. It's kind of mellow. Uh, it's very melodic still. Uh, and that's the last song on the album. So, I, you know, I like it. My problem with all of these albums, all three of them, is that I like them, I want to love them, and I don't. But there's nothing bad you can say about them. Right, if that makes any sense. So it's probably just me, and and I'll I'll, I'll talk I'll speak a little bit about that. So <clears throat> myself with female vocals in rock music and specifically hard rock music, it's like if the vocalist is going to be very kind of laid back and charming and and you know really good with like pop hooks and melodies and things like that, that's totally fine. But I want. I want the music to be kind of big and ballsy. So, like, for instance, uh, Night Witch, Night Wish. You know, you have great female vocals, sometimes operatic, sometimes more of a pop vein. Uh, it works with the big symphonic bombastic music. Uh, Epica. You have these lovely angelic vocals with this big, aggressive, heavy, extreme symphonic progressive metal. Right, you've got, and then you know, the other end of the extreme, you got you know, a band like Arch Enemy with female growling vocals on top of this really heavy, guitar heavy, virtuoso, uh, you know, classic style metal, death metal type of stuff. Um, you've got singers like you know, you got the Ann Wilson. Right, who can do the lovely crooning stuff, the more aggressive stuff, amazing vocals, uh, music can be hard rock, can be pop, runs the gamut of all sorts of things. I could go on and on and on here. I just I find that with this band, they come across in spots on their album that's like, you know, we really can play, we love a, and worship a classic band who really could play uh, and did like, you know, metal and prog and you know, all this kind of stuff. And... We're going to show you a lot of our virtuosity on these albums, but only to an extent. And we've got a singer who has a lovely voice, but maybe she's more suitable for a strict, you know, pop band singing ballads and stuff like that. And there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, so we're going to maybe half of our album is going to be stuff that's, you know, very suitable for her. And that's all fine and dandy. Like I said, these albums are good. They're really good. My problem is, <clears throat> I've listened to this one now five, six, seven times, and I'm liking a good chunk of it. And a good chunk of it, I'm just, it's not really grabbing me enough. 
and I really wanted to. I really want these albums to knock me on my pants, and they're just not. And I, for me, I've said it before, I've said it again, I just don't think that Rocky is a great fit in this band. She's a terrific singer. I just don't think she's a terrific singer for this band. Uh, we'll see what happens on future releases, right, with their new singer. Uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Uh, this is a, a very solid album. I'm going to give this three and a half out of five stars. That, that for me, is, is, is a good, solid record. I want it to be a four or four and a half. I really want it to because it sounds great. The instrumentation is killer. I just find there's lots of peaks and valleys here. And even the more aggressive songs, I want her to be a little more aggressive. Uh, and she's just very squeaky clean. Killer voice. It's a great singer. I would love to hear her singing like a whole album of just straight pop songs. Would love to hear that because I think she's just really good. I just don't think she's really, really good in this band. So there you have it. Light and Shade, the latest from Why Why Not. Uh, if you're so interested, check out the rest of the catalog. Like I said, they're all you can get them all, I believe, through the band. Uh, some of these are available on Amazon, so they're all over the place. So check it out. And visit us on the web at www.seatranquility.org. We're on Facebook, we're on Twitter. Of course, we're here on YouTube all the damn time. Good, melodic, hard rock, some proggy touches, some you know more mellow stuff. But uh, overall, very solid album. Despite my, despite my couple of reservations, I think a lot of folks out there will really, really like this, and I think that's what's important. So uh, check it out. Light and Shade from Why Why Not. Visit us on the web at www.seatranquility.org. We're on Facebook. We're on Twitter. Of course, we're here on YouTube all the damn time. Coming up, hopefully we got uh, one or two more for you today. The new one from Hollis, Isle of Wisdom, as well as uh, Alan Holdsworth, Jurassic Jazz Festival 2014, a new uh, archival release. So uh, lots of cool stuff coming out. So stay tuned for that and more here on the channel. Please subscribe if you haven't already and click on that notification bell. We've got the link below to our Ko-Fi page as well as our merch page where you can get all sorts of cool Sea of Tranquility shirts and hats and hoodies and things like that. So uh, thanks for watching. I'm Pete Pardo. See you real soon. Bye-bye.